Today on the show, we're taking a look at Justice League America number 70 from January of 1993. Hey guys, welcome back to Comageddon TV where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. As I said guys, today we're taking a look at Justice League America number 70 from January of 1993. Uh, this is a funeral for a friend tie-in. It takes place at the exact same time as the comic that we took a look at last week or yesterday, I'm sorry, uh, The Adventures of Superman, number 498. This is a first printing. I really like how they incorporated this little flap here. Uh, I had this comic years ago uh, in with my original collection. Uh, something happened to it. I'm not going to get into that, but... Uh, I didn't have it for the longest time. I had the majority of the Funeral for a Friend series. Um, but they all got lost, is the best way I can describe it. Um, so I ordered this off of Amazon. And it was here in like two or three days. Uh, but as you can see here. Superman is dead. The morning after begins here. Uh, and this, it's in really good condition. Uh, it said good uh, near mint. Um, it's got a little bit of wear on the binding, but it's not bad. It is, it is in really good condition. And as you can see here, it, the flap goes all the way around and then you have other issues that completely lack the flap um, and that just meant, means they're alternate uh, I'm not sure if they were uh, if the ones that didn't have include the flap were uh, second printings or not I'm not entirely sure but anyway Sticking with the same style as the entire Death of Superman run, uh, as well as Funeral for a Friend number one, uh, I really like how they kept the same artistic style. Uh, really helps them blend together for whenever they were put in trade paperback form uh, or an omnibus form. It helps the flow. Nowadays, you got different artists wanting to put their own takes on characters and all that. Um, and if the same artist isn't working on each issue that's incorporated in the trade paperback or the omnibus or whatever, uh, it doesn't really flow as well as these do. As you can see here, it starts out right where the death of Superman left off. Blood, wind, and ice. Ice, really heartbroken about it. She had a, you know, she had a schoolgirl girl crush on Superman. Um, she ends up collapsing, and Bloodwind has to take her to the hospital. Uh, then we join up with Maxima and Booster Gold. Booster Gold is really upset uh, that he wasn't able to help out any more than he did. Uh, and he's distressed that he may be fate looking at no longer being a superhero anymore because his power suit uh, is shredded. And with Booster Gold being from the future and his suit being from the future, he doesn't know if there's anyone around in this time period who can put his, who can fix his suit. And return his superpowers. So he's really upset about that. Guy Gardner comes in. Uh, and in typical Guy Gardner fashion. He begins hitting on Maxima. Uh, and his first words are. I guess it'll take some time Maxi. 
But if you start shopping for a new super bow, keep me in mind. <laughs> and she just blasts him. And here we find out that Blue Beetle is also in the hospital. Ted Cord. And they've got to fly him to Justice League headquarters. Um... <clears throat> really dark. And then we see fire and ice there. And the flash. This is the Wally West flash. And, you know, he hasn't served with Superman very much. That was his Uncle Barry's son. This takes place uh, maybe a couple years after Infinity Crisis. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but he mentions how uh, the death of Barry Allen is still fairly recent. So we see Aquaman there trying to comfort each other. Aquaman um, pretty much trying to console uh, Booster Gold uh, because he wasn't able to do more. Uh, Aquaman feels very um, feels very low because he wasn't around to help uh, stop doomsday and this is where all the justice League start meeting joining uh, coming in meeting up at Justice League HQ see Batman and Robin that's the Tim Drake Robin uh, Green Lantern uh, a different incarnation of Hawkman. I, I'm not entirely sure who that Hawkman is. But I don't think it's Carter Hall. Um, then we see Sentinel, who at that time was, I believe, still going, as, going out as Green Lantern. Uh, Power Girl, Jay Garrick, Elongated Man, Nightwing, uh... Starfire. And just the entire Justice League. Wonder Woman, Green Arrow, Black Canary. And they begin handing out the uh, armbands. Which, as a kid, when this came out, I, I wanted one of those armbands. <laughs> I won't lie. Um... But it, and then we got Condor. Is it is it Condor or Black Condor? I'm not entirely sure. But an ice creates a monument, a temporary monument to Superman, and even Guy Gardner puts on an armband, which is kind of in and out of character for him. And Booster is kind of grieving over his best friend, Blue Beetle. Uh, at the time, Booster and Blue Beetle were pretty much inseparable. Uh, so this wasn't... This is why they didn't mark it as a uh, numbered funeral for a friend. It's just a tie-in because it takes place... I would consider this funeral for a friend one and a half. Because it takes place at the exact same time as... The Adventures of Superman, number 498. I mean, there's not really much more I can say about this. Um, it was good. It was good. It really showed that, you know, the Justice League, no matter how heroic they are, no matter how powerful they are, they're still capable of mourning, uh, grieving in a way that ordinary people would. Uh, especially Ice. Ice took it the hardest. Uh, Batman. At this time, Superman and Batman weren't really best friends, I won't say. They were... They had their on and off moments. Um, it was more of a hostile friendship, I guess you could say. But I really liked what they did with this cover. You know, you got Booster Gold holding Blue Beetle there. You got 
Guy Gardner, Maxima, and Bloodwind off in the back. Just they're gre- they're mourning the loss of Superman, and then Ice just on her knees crying, holding Superman's cape. Uh, it, it's just an iconic scene. And I'm not really sure why, with the uh, Death of Superman animated movie coming out, uh, they wouldn't go this route and use the original characters. They used the main Justice League of Batman, Flash, Wonder Woman, all of them uh, in it. I would have really liked to see these characters. They don't get a lot of love. And I think that's a big downfall for DC Comics. They could really make more people uh, get into their other characters if they would put them in their animated films, in their animated series. You know, that's how that's how I was introduced to uh, Hawk and Dove was through. Uh, Justice League Unlimited. Uh, so they really had an opportunity to introduce new fans, younger fans, to this version of the Justice League. Minor characters. Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, Guy Gardner, Ice, Maxima, uh, Bloodwind, as well as Fire, who isn't shown here. Um, however, I can understand... To an extent, why they did what they did. Uh, you know, in the animated movie, Martian Manhunter, from what I could tell of the previews, he does play a small role in it. Uh, he's more than likely going to be taking Bloodwind's place, which this is actually Martian Manhunter. Uh, according to DC Comics chron- chronology, official chronology, uh, the demon rot sucked Bloodwind into the blood gem and mind controlled Martian Manhunter into wearing Bloodwind's blood gem and impersonating him. Uh, using Bloodwind's identity, the Manhunter joined the Justice League as one of their more mysterious members. Uh, when the JLA fought Doomsday, Superman and Blue Beetle realized Bloodwind's identity when Bloodwind was surrounded by fire. That It was the scene when Mitch Anderson later outburst when his family's house was on fire and his mother and sister were trapped inside. If you want, go back, take a look at that. I already covered the death of Superman. Uh, you can check that video out on the channel. Uh, I'm still waiting for Funeral for a Friend number two uh, to show up in my mail. I hate it when third-party sellers on Amazon don't provide tracking information. But it's been shipped already. It should be here any day now. I'm really hoping to be able to get that review done. So with that being said, guys, here you have it. Justice League America number 70 from January of 1993. Funeral for a friend tie-in. Superman is dead. The morning after begins here. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Take care, my friends.